This video is about interpreting functions that are nonlinear in variables, like this quadratic function here. So first we'll discuss one common misinterpretation, and then we'll look at an example of a correct interpretation. So the most common misinterpretation when there's a nonlinear in variables function like this is to only look at this linear term here and think that the other nonlinear terms uh, we can worry about later. So for example, if beta one were equal to 5, we might think that that indicates a positive relationship between x and y, regardless of the other terms. Uh, but we'll see that's not true. For example, if beta naught is 0 and beta 2 is negative 1, we can see this most easily by drawing a graph, which you can do yourself also. And we'll see we get this parabola like this. And this is 5. This is the origin over here. Um, this is 2.5 at the peak. And we can see that when x is either negative or between 0 and 2.5, there is a positive relationship. But once x gets above 2.5, there's actually a negative relationship. So if we were to only focus on that 5 and think that means there's a positive relationship, we could be wrong. And it could be that x is something like years of education, where most values are way out here, where there's a very negative relationship, even though beta 1 is positive. So let's look at a related example where, just for simplicity, we'll also use a quadratic functional form. So imagine we estimate our model and we get this. I'll imagine x is years of education and y is income in this case. And we are specifically interested in what happens if we increase x from 11 to 12. So following the book, what we can do is we can plug in x equals 11 and x equals 12 into our estimated function and take the difference to get the corresponding change in y associated with that increase in x. So if we take f hat of 12 and then subtract f hat of 11. So I'll plug in for those two in terms of the betas. So we'll get beta hat naught. Uh, so I'll plug in 12 first. And then Plug in the same, but with x equals 11. So 
we can see these uh, intercept terms will cancel out to zero. And then if we group the beta hat one terms, we'll have beta hat one times 12 minus beta hat one times 11. So we'll get zero for the intercepts. Beta hat one. And then for the squared terms, we'll have beta hat 2 times 12 squared minus 11 squared. And if we put that all together, We'll get a single beta hat one. And then this other part is 144 minus 121, which is 23. 23. Two. And then we can just plug in whatever uh, beta hats we had estimated from our data to get our estimated change in y associated with an increase in x from 11 to 12.